The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC, Redefine, VCE, innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade, say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back, Jeff Frick here at EMC World 2014. We're going wall to wall with theCUBE. We've got two cubes, three days, I think seven hosts. I can only even know how many we have all together. So as you know, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get the smartest people in the room, we get them on the cube. And this is the fifth year that we've been coming to EMC World. It's actually the, the start of the cube. Uh, a number of, what, 2009, I guess, if I do the quick math in my head. So we're really excited to be here, and I'm joining this segment by my co-host. Steve Keniston, the storage alchemist. Thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here, live in Las Vegas, 2014. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, you know, we like to go out into the audience, bring some of the smartest people to come out and talk to you, our industry practitioners. So today, joining us on theCUBE is Rafael Merowitz, AVP of uh, Data Center Technology uh, Services for Presidio. Jeff, just for our clientele, how about we, uh, Jeff, I'm sorry about that. Raphael, just, uh, can you help us set the stage just for folks so they help us understand, or you can help us understand who Presidio really is? Yeah, so Presidio is a national systems integrator. We EMC second largest um, reseller in North America, largest VCE reseller in North America. We're also one of Microsoft's largest partners. We were recently awarded, actually this morning, we were recently awarded the Converge Infrastructure Partner of the Year um, from EMC. We are full integrator. We provide professional services. We also uh, sell product and we provide solutions to our customers, whether they be uh, private cloud solutions, public cloud or hybrid cloud solutions. Congratulations on your award. That's pretty prestigious. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Appreciate it. So, um, Tell us a little bit about uh, what you've seen here at EMC World. You know, we've been here a few years. You're a CUBE alumni, been on the CUBE before. Um, tell us what you think of the show so far. I think the show this year is great. Um, EMC is clearly moving in the direction of um, software and hybrid cloud, um, which is something that uh, Presidio is obviously very interested in and something that we've been selling and implementing for our customers for quite a few years now. And uh, you, you brought up the fact that uh, part of this award was uh, for converged infrastructure. Yep. So we're hearing a lot about convergence and converged infrastructure. Give us a give us a taste or a flavor of kind of the def Presidio's definition and kind of what they what you see your clients are asking from you and how you're kind of helping them down the path to get to that convergence. So the multiple solutions that Presidio has come out with, um, you know, we look at reference architecture from EMC. We also leverage VBlock as well. We've also come out with um, something called Presidio Managed Cloud. Presidio Managed Cloud is essentially a product that Presidio developed from the ground up where we can manage the full private cloud and hybrid cloud experience for the customer. So if the customer wants to move workloads between private and public cloud, we can provide our expertise around that and we also provide the expertise that we will manage that vSpecs or vBlock solution on an ongoing basis and provide the customers for, uh, for support, uh, customer support for that solution. So Rafael, is that a total solution, software, hardware, and services? Yeah, so it's software, hardware, and services, um, and ongoing support as and well. ongoing support. So obviously, there's a lot of buzz in the marketplace with, with public clouds, right? And should you have your stuff in other clouds? Talk a little bit about how cloud technology is evolving in a private cloud and how somebody like you guys with expertise, a broad uh, a kind of data set because of a lot of customers are bringing some new technologies and new innovations from the data center perspective that would, that would tell people, hey, we've got a better cloud than you could potentially manage yourself. Because that's always the knock, right? It's, could somebody else do cloud better than my guys can do cloud? Right, so Presidio, uh, we start off every single engagement with something called the strategic engagement framework. The SEF framework is something that Presidio has developed internally where we consult with our customers and we get buy-in from them before we actually move forward in selling them a solution and also implementing a solution. So when we look at it, one of the examples I can give you is, you know, we had a customer that um, was very interested in moving to Office 365. We went in there, we did an assessment, and 
we came out from that assessment saying to the customer that they weren't ready to move to Office 365 because some of the applications required on-prem exchange. And um, what ended up with, happening with that customer was a staffing customer. They ended up buying a vSpec solution for the Microsoft Exchange environment. So when you do that assessment, what are some of those other kind of key indicators that you guys uncover that either the customer didn't really know about or didn't understand the importance of, or maybe were just under the surface that they didn't really think through when they're coming to somebody who's more of an expert? So there's a few things, right, when you look at it. Security is a big piece, right? Um, defining uh, recovery point objectives, re recovery time objectives is a big piece of that. And also, um, you know, how much money is a customer actually going to spend over three to five years if they're looking at alternate solutions. Um, so application integration is important. I think the SaaS market today, um, a lot of customers have moved a lot of the applications to, to the SaaS-based solutions. But when we're looking at pure uh, public cloud solutions where customers are looking at moving virtual machines to public cloud and, and moving workloads, uh, in between public and private cloud, Presidio really looks at those applications to actually understand if those applications are, um, can be moved to public cloud, because not every single application can be. Um, also, EMC has developed something internally that uh, platinum partners like Presidio can use, and we leverage that, um, uh, that collateral uh, for our assessments as well. So you mentioned something pretty interesting, right? As your clients, you know, it's not necessary that they go down and, and every particular application that they have is ready for the private cloud. Can you take us through some of those things that, that you help your clients through a decision-making process and kind of the steps you go through to kind of get there and then, and then what is it about that? And, and, and is, it, is, it, is it tiering, you know, may, maybe they have tier one applications and tier two and other considerations like protection considerations. Well, take us through that process that your clients go through. Yeah, so, you know, our customers today, typically you'll go in a customer where they have all on-prem and some of them have are leveraging AWS and VCHS for public cloud, but the majority of the applications are on-prem. Um, and they're looking at leveraging public cloud a lot more. I think the first uh, thing that we need to do when we sit down with any customer is understand why they want to actually leverage uh, public cloud or move the applications from private cloud to public cloud. Oftentimes, it comes down to um, the economics, right? Um, and it's not necessarily the agility because Presidio also can provide customers with something called a COD solution, which is capacity on demand, where they will always have enough capacity, right? And their end user will never ever complain. So when we, when we sit down and we sit down with customers and we go through application by application, tier one, tier two, tier three applications, we need to understand what their business continuity is for those applications. Typical, t typically, tier one mission critical applications, Microsoft applications today, what we find are mission critical, where they're SharePoint SQL Exchange. And we've had customers that have actually moved back from pub uh, public cloud, whether it's Office 365 or something else, back to on-prem because Microsoft didn't really meet their SLA requirements, and when they were when they were outages, there's nothing that they could really do. I see. So we sit down with all of our customers and we we speak to them about all of that. Oftentimes, um, C-level executives, systems administrators, even network um, networking engineers, and our customers need to be part of those meetings because it's not just about storage; it's about compute by networking, virtualization, and storage. So you brought up a really good point that I'd like to drill down on just, just a little bit. So um, one of the questions I was going to ask, and, and you answered it, was, so what are some of the reasons behind, you know, uh, why I want to go to the cloud? And I think one of the things you said was, was it, it's economics, right? I want to be able to do this, uh, get, get some better economics. Now, I've read a lot of stuff on the internet between blog posts and that sort of thing where the economics in some cases make sense, in other cases it doesn't make sense. Um, 
What are you seeing? How do you rationalize? What's the right thing? What's the wrong thing? Because I think our practitioners would like to know, okay, I'm hearing the economic story and I'm reading a lot of things to say maybe, maybe the economics isn't right, but I'd like to make sure I make the right decision. Yeah, I think the right decision is, I think it's probably five things, right, that play into it. Security is important. Disaster recovery. What type of, um, what type of uptime do you expect from your application? And also tied into that is the whole backup and recovery piece as well. Oftentimes when you move to a public cloud provider, they're not going to provide you with any uh, backup and recovery service. And if they do, you're at the mercy of what the, you know, the bandwidth that they're providing you. And sometimes you can't even back up your applications fast enough. So. so Raphael, I want to go back to your kind of assessment documents. I think that's really important that you guys are helping people define the path, right? Yep. And, have they really thought through all the things? Are you doing a, like, like a hardcore ROI uh, as part of that process yeah, so, as well? So during our strategic engagement framework, uh, not just ROI, but also TCO as well, because I think when you look at the return that the customer's going to get over the next three years, and also how much it's going to cost them, right. that's probably the most important piece. And public cloud pr uh, prices have dropped dramatically, right? So. And continue. And continue right? to and drop. Continue. And continue That's to drop. And you know, the the truth is also when you look at it, even on-prem infrastructure, the price of on-prem infrastructure have continued to drop as well. Sure. So um, you can factor that into the equation as well. Um, but I've seen customers that have moved significant workloads to public cloud, and three months later, they're shocked by how much it costs. Right. Right. And then they look at it moving it back. Right. But. Even even within the within your you know it's an internal managed private cloud yep, right your yep, solution. Yep. Where is the money? Where, where are you finding when you go through this assessment that's getting them to make the move? Is it tremendous ROI? Is it just a, a lower uh, total cost of ownership over time? Where where are the economic benefits that you're uncovering? So there's, they go there's a few economic benefits, right? Um, they don't have to get their systems administrators to manage their private cloud every single day. Those systems administrators can be freed up to do other things okay. that are more important to the business, okay. right? Um, I think a lot of customers, uh, when I speak to a lot of customers, they're tired of managing infrastructure on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, right. Um, so the cost of that is significant, and through our, our uh, Presidio Managed Cloud offering, we have orchestration automation layer on the top, where all they need to do is go to a dashboard and basically, um, provision the virtual machine, and if there's an issue, they can call us up, and we con continually monitor the hardware and software. So it's almost like insourcing. It is like insourcing, Because Absolutely. you're you're not you're an outsourced provider, right. quote unquote, but right. you're managing a private cloud inside their infrastructure. Correct, yep. Okay, and then how many of these things are you managing across your infrastructure to make it a worthwhile? So we, Presidio has over a thousand managed services customers. Okay. Um, the Presidio Managed Cloud offering is a new offering okay. that we've come to market with. Um, again, it's around Cisco, EMC, uh, and VMware. And, um, and what workloads predominantly? Pro to, uh, predominantly, you're going to look at workloads that are average of about 300 VMs, okay. but uh, we could scale it to 5,000 VMs if we need it. Any, any showcase giant ones that you like to talk about? As, um, as we, have, we have a few customers that uh, that have uh, used our capacity on demand model, okay. where you know a very very large telco, where they had an issue where they had um, sprawl right, and a lot of customers had sprawl, public cloud sprawl, where their developers were going out of the public cloud, and Presidio came up with the, the capacity on demand solution to prevent IT from going outside of the organization. And the developers' number, the number one complaint from the developers was basically that IT could not provision the infrastructure fast enough, and they were waiting a long time. So this capacity on demand which model. Is why they go, which is why they go to Amazon in exactly. the first place, right? The, the, right. the delay and right. the delay in getting something spun right. up so I can get back to work. So the capacity on demand model basically says, all right, you're always going to have a work pool that is ready okay. that is not utilized. Okay. And you're only going to pay for it once you actually utilize it. So um, a lot of our customers have seen benefits around that and continue to see benefits around that. All right, excellent. So let's shift gears a little bit. So 
been a long time since you've been on the cube. I guess we yeah. scared you or something. I don't know, <laughs> Stu, we're blaming you. But uh, so you've been covering these shows for a while. What's exciting about EMC World 2014? Why is this an important moment of time? Um, I think it's an important moment of time because what I've seen, you know, I still remember going to VMworld in 2008. And uh, at that time, I believe it was Paul Moritz was in charge of VMware, and he got up and started talking about cloud computing. I think the reality is... 2008. Six, I think it was 2008. Okay. The Check, look that up, guys. <laughs> it's back in the truck. The reality <laughs> is, six years later, a lot of customers need a hybrid cloud environment. And I think EMC is positioned in the market to deliver that because of the software stack that they have and also some of the hardware um, that can leverage public and private cloud. And so, Rafael, can you tell us a little bit about what you see as some of the opportunities for Presidio when it comes to EMC, their emerging technologies, and kind of what you do today with, with Microsoft? Yeah, so um, on the Microsoft side, uh, EMC has a very, very tight alliance with Microsoft. Um, when you look at it, not just the Hypervisor or the Hyper-V, but Exchange, as I mentioned, SharePoint, SQL, the applications. Um, the applications, there's integration with a lot of EMC products. For example, RecoverPoint, AppSync, Network, uh, Microsoft Module, and some of the other um, EMC products, very, very tightly aligned with Microsoft. Um, in fact, even if you look at Xbox, right, they were showcasing it yesterday, Xbox Live, the entire Xbox Live environment runs on Isilon. And um, a lot of customers today, Microsoft applications are mission critical. Ten years ago, customers didn't really care if Exchange went down. Today, if Exchange goes it's a down big deal. <laughs> and they can't get email, it's a big problem. Um, and the increase in, um, even when you look at the increase in database sizes on the SQL side, and even SharePoint farms, customers are using SharePoint a lot more than they've ever used before. Um, I think uh, EMC is very, very well positioned in the market uh, to continue to succeed, not just providing, by cu providing customers with on-prem solutions, but also um, cloud solutions like VCHS. As well. And you guys helping your customers take those services to marketplace. Absolutely, yep. Yes. Yep. All right, well, Rafael, thanks for coming back to theCUBE. Hopefully Thank it you. won't be another uh, four years before we see you again. <laughs> Congratulations on the new offering. Hopefully that'll go well for you. So, Thank you. again, exciting times, and it, it's good to get a little historical perspective. Six years ago, talking about the cloud, and even then, we're still in early days, right? We're still relatively early days. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm Jeff Frick. We're in theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next segment from VMworld 2014 after this short break. Thanks for watching. <laughs>